Hello guys, welcome to ruling-academy.com. To continue this series of the well control subject, this video is made in slow motion mode by WellQ method, the weight and weight method for subsea operation. Theoretically, there is only one circulation to kill the well. Shut the well in and wait for QMAT to be ready. Then pump QMAT down to circulate influx out of the well and kill the well. Much shorter time on choke, lower annulus pressure. However, chance of gas migration is higher during waiting time and more calculations need to be done before starting circulation. This graph is showing how the pressure progresses on the drip by pressure gauge and casing pressure gauge. Drip by pressure gauge is the green line. Casing pressure gauge is the purple line and the pump speed is in the red graph here. All right, so we pump the QMAT down the screen to bring the pump up to Q rate. Casing pressure is held constant and certain casing pressure deduct choke life friction loss. Drip by pressure is expected to increase from certain drip by pressure up to initial circulating pressure. And then we continue pumping at the same Q rate. We control the choke to allow drip pipe pressure to drop from ICP to find a circulating pressure when the Q mud reaches to the bit. While doing that, we expect to see case of pressure increasing in the annulus because if the influx the gas bubble is traveling up on the annulus. After Q mud has reached the bit, it comes out filling up the annulus. We control the choke to go to hold the drip pipe pressure gauge constant at final circulating pressure, and casing pressure is expected to continue to, to rise up until the influx reaches to the BOP. And when influx start getting into the choke line, we expect to see drip pipe pressure to drop maximum an amount of choke line friction loss. Therefore, we need to close the choke to compensate for the choke line, the loss of choke line friction loss to get the drip pipe pressure gauge back to find a circulating pressure value. And when chokes start getting out of the choke and kill manifold, uh, then we expect to see case and pressure gaze mass out and then drop down drastically to zero. And when Q, Q mud is traveling up into the choke line, we expect to see the drip by pressure gaze increase an amount of new choke line friction loss. Therefore, we can open the choke and when QMAT is all the way around, then we can shut the pump down. Now we get into step by step in detail of this procedure. For subsea operation, there are a few things need to be done before we start the circulation. First, we shut the well in on upper annular on LMRP. Then we proceed to hang off the drill string on a RAM EOP in stack. If the choke and kill lines are containing seawater or glyco, note down the adjustment on shilling case in pressure as the new true shilling case in pressure following this formula here. And then we displace the choke and kill line to the same mud as in the hole for the sake of easy monitoring pressure. And we work out the QMUD weight by using this classic formula. We determine the mask. Now the choke and kill lines are containing the same fluid as in the well. So therefore, we just simply use this formula to work out the mask. And don't forget the choke line friction loss, take it off the mask for the dynamic mask. And choke line friction loss, we take the slow circulating pump rate of the riser, deduct the slow circulating pump rate of the choke line. When we bring the pump up and run it, we take choke line friction loss off the casing pressure gauge. When we shut down the pump, we put choke line friction loss back onto the casing pressure gauge. If we plan to use Q line gauge to monitor pressure, remember to shut the fail safe valves on Q line before influx gets to BOP to avoid gas migrating into Q line. And now we work out the two pi pressure step out every 100 stroke by using these classic formulas here, ICP, FCP, and this formula here. This is applicable for vertical well. But for deviated well, the 
pressure loss is different in each interval of the well path. We take a look at this simple 2D slant well. It has a vertical interval. Come down to the kickoff point here, and then start the building section. And at the end of build, we hold the well path tension all the way to the well TD. So the pressure loss in each interval of the well path varies. In the, the well profile has the kicker point and end up mill here. These are the points we must calculate the circulating pressure because the pressure loss inside the real screen in, at the interval is different from the pressure loss inside the real screen of the build section and which is also different from the pressure loss inside the real screen during the whole session. So these formulas here are used to work out the circulating pressure at these two interest points. First, we work out the pressure loss at kickoff point. Then we work out the remaining shooting group power pressure at kickoff point using this formula at the bulb to get the circulating pressure point here. We do the same thing, similar thing for pressure loss at end of build at this point here. First, we use this formula to work out the pressure loss at end of build. Then we use this formula here to work out, to calculate the remaining shooting drip by pressure at end of build. Then we sum them up, add these two figures together to get the circulating pressure value at end of build. And then for the interval, the vertical interval here, we have the total pump strokes inside the real string, we call it V. For the build session, we have the bump, total pump strokes for the build session, we call it V. And for the hole tension, we have the total pump stroke inside the real string for the hole. We use this formula here uh, to work out the pressure, due by pressure drop down in every 100 stroke for each interval. These figures are extremely important because we will base on these stepping down graphs here to control our chalk to allow the drill power pressure to follow the drops, the pressure drops in each interval. So therefore, if our figures are not correct, are not accurate, we will end up adjusting the chalk inaccurately. Plus, we will have the wrong bottom hole pressure, not as what supposed to be, to keep constant and above the formation pressure. So therefore, make sure you then you would you will do a good calculation accurately and cross check them. No mistake is tolerant in here. And last but not least, choke adjustment will cause instant pressure gauge uh, change on the choke gauge. But for drill by pressure, the lag time is one second per one thousand fit of the well measured depth. So therefore, the lag time will be two times of well measured depth in foot divided by 1,000. So be patient. After you adjust the choke, wait for the lag time to see reaction on the drill by pressure gauge here. All right, now we start our circulation. Stage one, we bring the pump up to the Q rate. We stick with casing pressure gauge. One cubit is ready. Line up and pump cubit into the string. Work out your surface line volume in strokes. Reset stroke counter after you reach surface line volume. Open the choke slowly to keep casing pressure about 150 to 100 psi above the initial shift in casing pressure deducted in the amount of choke line friction loss. Drill by pressure gauge will increase from initial shift in drill by pressure all the way up to initial circulating pressure, ICP, which equates SCR of the riser plus shift in drill by pressure. We can also stick with Q-line pressure, guys. Keep 50 to 100 PSI above initial on a Q-line gauge. Stage two, we continue to stick, and now we transfer our attention to the drill by pressure gauge. We watch casing pressure gauge not to exceed mass deduct choke line friction loss here, while the influx is below the shoe. We keep circulating at Q-rate constant, the influx, Reach BOP, 
the control, we control the choke to keep true pipe pressure following the step that graph from ICP to FCP, drops from ICP to FCP following this graph here. All right. And make sure that our case and pressure goes below mass deduct choke line pressure lot while influx is below the shoe. When influx is above the shoe, here's a shoe. We can ignore this mass deduct choke line pressure loss. So now QMAP is filled up inside the string. It has reached to the bit. Then stage number three, QMAP starts getting into the annulus. We still stick with our Dubai pressure gauge, and we still watch case in pressure gauge not to see mass deduct choke line crystal loss while the influx is below shoe. All right. When the influx reaches the BOP, we expect to see case in pressure gauge increase higher. And we remember there's a lag time for the choke adjustment to be reflected on Dubai pressure gauge. All right. Then next stage, we continue pumping at the same kill rate. And now the gas is displaced into the choke line. We expect to see drip by pressure gauge drop a little bit and the amount of choke line friction loss. Therefore, we need to close the choke to compensate for the loss of choke line friction loss, get it back to original final circulating pressure to keep constant bottom of pressure. Okay, and when the ga and gas is traveling up in the choke line here, uh, comes up to the surface, we expect to see case in pressure gauge max out. And then when gas start getting out of the choke and Q manifold, we expect to see case in pressure gauge drops down drastically. And while during this process, we still control the choke to keep drip pipe pressure gauge constant at final circulating pressure. And when Q mud starts filling into the choke line, right? We're still pumping at the same kill rate. When Q must starts getting into the choke line, filling up the choke line, we get back the choke line friction loss. But this is not the old choke line friction loss. This is the new choke line friction loss here. So the new pressure register on the Dubai pressure gauge will be the final circulating pressure plus the new choke line friction loss. We keep pumping to get the Q all the way around back to the peak here. All right, so Qmat comes back is coming back to the pit in here. All right, this is the formula here we use to work out the new choke line friction loss here. So after Qmat is all the way around, we can go ahead and we shut the pump down. We close the choke, shut the pump down, and eventually drill pressure will come down all the way to zero. So from the moment the Qmat comes back to service. Yes, it's all out of the choke and Q manifold. Then to the end, case in pressure gaze all shows zero. Right? All right, so for sub C BOP, after we shut the pump down here, we are not done yet. We still have a few more steps to do. We need first is to displace the other parts of the Q line, the choke line into QMAT, and then we proceed to this place to remove the gas trapped in sub -C BOP stack in this area here. There might be some gas trapped in the stack. And after that, we will proceed to this place, the Q line and all of these parts, or the branches of the Q line into the QMAT. And this place the surface system into QMAT, and then flow check the well over the choke if things are static, then we can open up the well and proceed to our normal operation. All right, this is the basis and principle of weight and weight method for subsea operation. I hope the slow motion mode does help you get a thorough view of how things happen, what to be expected to hear and to see, and it requires the patient only, especially to see a group of pressure gauge reaction after you adjust the choke. Time consuming process, but then this is all what it takes. Stay calm and play on. Any questions or like to have a discussion, please drop me an email. See you soon in the next video. Thank you and bye.